Hello student, welcome to the lecture on natural history of disease and role of hospitals. And after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the anthrax and bubonic plague, define the cholera and Hansen's disease, leprosy. Discuss the hemophilia, malaria, polio and smallpox. Understand the typhoid fever and yellow fever. It is often taught that the course of history hinges upon great battles, both in war and among competing ideas. The stars are a few powerful individuals, presidents, monarchs, dictators, whose action can shift a society development one way or another. But some influential actors are nasty and ruthless and microscopic. These key diseases, anthrax, smallpox, tuberculosis, syphilis, AIDS, influenza, bubonic plague, cholera, malaria, yellow fever, two non-infectious diseases, hemophilia and porphyria and the plant disease behind the Irish potato famine have altered history. Let us now discuss anthrax. Anthrax has been an influential disease since its discovery by Robert Koch in the 1870s. It is bacterial in nature and in most cases leads to death. The discovery was made by Robert Koch when he uncovered the existence of a new bacterium, Bacillus anthracis, which results in black shapes and boils on the skin. Anthrax, a potentially fatal infection, is a virulent and highly contagious disease. The fifth and sixth biblical plagues have been characterized as anthrax. Bacterium that forms spores. Anthrax is a zoonotic disease that is transmissible to humans through the handling or consumption of contaminated animal products. Anthrax can be found globally in temperate zones, including in the United States. It is more often a risk in countries with less standardized and less effective public health programs. Herbivorous wildlife mammals such as deer, wildebeest, elephants, and domesticated livestock such as goats, sheep, cattle, horses, and swine are at the highest risk for the disease. Animal infections in the United States are reported most often in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and South Dakota. These animals usually become infected while grazing on contaminated land, eating contaminated feed, or drinking from contaminated water holes. Bacillus anthracis spores can remain viable in soil for many years. There are three types of anthrax cutaneous, inhalation, and gastrointestinal. Anthrax has also been used as a biological weapon. This happened in the United States in 2001. Anthrax was deliberately spread through the postal system when letters containing anthrax in powder form caused 22 anthrax infections. Anthrax is classified as a Category A agent by the CDC. Category A agents are those that pose the greatest possible threat for a bad effect on public health, may spread across a large area or need public awareness, and require a great deal of planning to protect the public's health. In most cases, early treatment with antibiotics can cure cutaneous anthrax. Even if untreated, 80% of people who become infected with cutaneous anthrax do not die. Gastrointestinal anthrax is more serious because between one-fourth and more than half of cases lead to death. Inhalation anthrax is much more severe. In the 2001 anthrax postal scare, about half of the cases of inhalation anthrax ended in death. Etiology. Bacillus anthracis and endosperm reforming bacillus, a large aerobic gram positive microorganism, can survive under specific moisture environment. A begin B. Anthracis cell is non flagellated with dimension 1 to 8 micrometers in length and 1 to 1.5 micrometers in breadth. Once in contact with human tissue, the bacteria will spread through circulation to the lymphatics where they can proliferate. Affected Population Anthrax spreads easily through animal heights nearby humans because of the zoonotic nature of the bacteria. The height of any animal infected with anthrax will likely contain endosperms that infect anyone who is in contact with them. Control and Prevention During the 19th century, concurrence of several important events resulted in preventive measures against the bacterium. Although Louis Pasteur's veterinary anthrax vaccine containing attenuated live organism, the time of administration of antibiotics promptly after anthrax infection is essential. Let us now discuss a bubonic plague. 
Diseases have plagued humanity throughout its existence, often changing the course of history. Of all of the diseases mankind has encountered, the most infamous is often considered to be the Black Death. This disease is thought to have been caused by a type of bacteria called Yersinia pestis, and it can cause a person to have an extremely painful death over the course of a few days. The Black Death. The Black Death is a general term used to describe the plague that spread throughout Europe primarily from 540 to 1666 AD and for several centuries later, where there were fewer and more sporadic epidemics. There are several instances of the Black Death throughout this time period and a few major epidemics between 540 and 666, as well as rare and isolated cases afterward. During the mid-14th century, Eurasia would experience an event that would transform every aspect of society and change the course of history. 1347 to 1353 were incredibly disastrous years among all peoples in the Eurasian region of the world. This widespread mixture of multiple diseases, later referred to as the Black Death, covered Asia, some areas in the Middle East, and nearly all of Europe spreading rapidly. The most notable disease in the mixture is called the bubonic plague. Historians believe the bubonic plague began its course in Central Asia where flea-infested rats were infected with the plague. These rats snuck their way onto ships and eventually fell victim to the horrendous disease. Once the host was dead, fleas had to look for a new food source, turning to humans. Infected fleas would latch onto individuals, injecting bacteria into the bloodstream. The disease then makes its way into the lymph nodes. The victims develop a fever and large painful pus-filled pimples, followed by severe vomiting. Eventually, the lymph nodes burst, flooding the bloodstream with bacteria, and the organs begin to liquefy. The plague continued to spread via infected fleas all throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East through excessive trading. The disease killed millions and severely affected those who lived through the phenomenon. It was rumored to have killed about 25 million in Europe alone and another 50 million across the world. The most recent outbreak occurred in Europe in 1720, killing many. Biological Description, Morphology and Symptoms At the time of the Black Death, little was known about biology. In fact, the concept of contagion originated as people saw this disease spreading to anyone near those infected. The people at the time became panic and they became soon paranoid of anything related to the disease. Let us now discuss another topic. Throughout history, cholera has caused major epidemics that have taken a devastating toll on human population. It is most commonly connected to areas with poor sanitary conditions and dense populations. Populations affected Cholera has been responsible for more than a million deaths across the globe. It is prevalent in areas of high population where there are poor water purification systems and where food storage and preparation is unhealthy. Poor hygiene is key for V. cholera to infect a host. This is the story of how cholera changed my village. Tiny germs of cholera, too small to see spread through the river, so small, yet so dangerous. Without realizing, women carried cholera home in the water. Flies carried cholera on their feet. Unwashed hands spread it too. We swallowed cholera germs in our water on our food and on our fingers. It happened so fast. By morning, my father was very sick. He had diarrhea that looked like rain water and poured out of him. I was so scared. I went for help. I never rode so fast. One look at my father and the nurse knew it was cholera. We had to work fast to save him. We made a special drink to help him. 
First, we made the water safe. We filtered it through cloth and boiled it for one minute. Then, we mixed half a teaspoon of salt and six teaspoons of sugar in one liter of this safe water. It tasted like tears, not too salty. I worried my father would die before my eyes, but he soon felt a little stronger. The nurse explained to me that not everyone who swallows cholera germs gets sick like my father, but they can still spread the disease. Now I needed to take safe water to my village and teach them how to protect themselves from cholera. I saw a girl carrying water. I told her she could make the water safe by adding chlorine drops and waiting half an hour. There was a man about to eat with unclean hands. I told him to always wash his hands with soap and safe water after going to the toilet. Only with clean hands could he eat safely. I saw villagers spreading cholera into our river. I told them we needed to dig latrines far from the river, at least 30 meters away. This was important to keep our village clean. I found a mother preparing unsafe food. I told her, first, we must wash our hands with safe water. Then, we had to wash and peel the food, cook it and always eat it hot, and protect it from flies. I spread the word throughout my village and ran to find my father. I was so happy to see he was better. Our village became healthy. Now we filter and boil our water to make sure it is safe. We always use latrines and always wash our hands after. Food is safe from flies, washed and peeled and cooked. And we always wash our hands before cooking and eating. We made our village safe from cholera. Spread the word. Your village can be safe too. Etiology. The disease cholera is caused by a bacterium, Vibrio cholera, because the most common square of cholera is contaminated drinking water. It is easy for the bacterium to enter the body. Once it is inside, it becomes an infection of the small intestine. The bacterium is known to live and multiply in close proximity to algae and marine invertebrates. Treatment When treated at the first signs, cholera is unlikely to be fatal. Symptoms include watery diarrhea, vomiting, quick dehydration, tiredness, abdominal cramps and nausea. Immunization and Prevention For further prevention, new vaccines are being researched that would prevent the contractions of cholera. Several vaccines are available. The vaccines are not recommended for everyone because there are some negative aspects to them. Recipients are only immune for a short period of time. They are still susceptible to any infection that has a typical symptoms. The vaccine is more of a preventative measure for travelers to disease strike on countries. Let us now discuss another topic, leprosy. Leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease, has been feared and misunderstood throughout its history, thought by many to be a purely hereditary disease, a curse or a punishment from God. Leprosy sufferers were brutally stigmatized and shunned. Leprosy could have occurred as early as 1550 BC in Egypt. Many scholars believe that leprosy appears in an Egyptian papyrus document written close to that year. Etiology and Effects Two reactions can occur from the entrance of mycobacterium lepra into the body, a milder reaction and a stronger reaction. Tuberculiot leprosy or TT is the milder reaction. In the deeper layers of the skin, the immune cells of the body attempt to seal off the infection from the rest of the body by surrounding the mycobacterium leprae. Population affected and geographic distribution. Fortunately, leprosy has been eliminated from the most countries. However, most of the incidents of leprosy that still occur are located in the most poverty-striking regions on the globe.
Therefore, one could argue that environmental factors such as insanitation, overpopulation and malnutrition could contribute to the contraction of the disease. Leprosy treatment and immunization. Leprosy treatment generally consists of a mixture of drugs. In the past, the oil of seeds from the called Mugra tree was used to relieve leprosy. As the natives of Southeastern Asia have long known of its curative properties, this approach is viewed as the most effective treatment for preventing nerve damage, deformity, disability, and further transmission. And the majority of patients with PB leprosy or TT are given this treatment. Usually, upon three months of treatment, the patient is no longer infectious. These drugs, although effective, do contain side effects. Dapsone uh, can cause nausea, dizziness, palpitations, jaundice, and rash. Rifampin may also cause muscle cramps or nausea. Clofazimine may cause severe abdominal pain and diarrhea, as well as discoloration of the skin. Let us now discuss another topic, Haemophilia. In the Talmud, a collection of rabbinical writings from the 2nd century AD, scribes stated that male babies did not have to be circumcised if two brothers had already died from the procedure. Most people of the ancient times did not know that what seemed like a sign of physical weakness was actually the result of a blood disorder known as Haemophilia. Morphology Hemophilia is a genetic disorder that reduces the level of clotting factors. Females can be carriers but are often unaffected by the disease because women have two X chromosomes and one normal gene can compensate for a defective gene. There are two main types of hemophilia. Type A hemophilias, also known as classic hemophilias, have little to no clotting factors, F8, which is about 90% of the hemophilic community. Others with hemophilia B, also known as the Christmas disease, have missing or low levels of clotting factor F9. The word hemophilia derives from two Greek words, hema meaning blood and philia meaning affection. Hemophilia is a hereditary condition. This means that it's passed from mother to child at the time of birth. As you can see, when the father has hemophilia and the mother doesn't, none of the sons will have hemophilia but all of the daughters will carry the gene. When the mother carries it, there's a 50% chance that the boys will end up having hemophilia and there's a 50% chance that the daughters will end up carrying the gene. The blood of a person with hemophilia does not clot normally. They do not bleed more profusely or more quickly than other people, however they bleed for a longer time. Many people believe that hemophiliacs bleed a lot from minor cuts. This is a myth. External wounds are usually not too serious. Far more important is internal bleeding, hemorrhaging. These hemorrhages are in joints, especially knees, ankles, and elbows, and into tissues and muscles. This leads to very painful swelling, as you can see. There are three types of hemophilia. Hemophilia A, Hemophilia B, known as Christmas disease, or Hemophilia C. Hemophilia A is the most common and represents 80% of most hemophilia cases. It is caused by the absence of clotting factor VII and occurs in about 1 in 5,000 to 10,000 male births. Hemophilia B is more rare than A and occurs in only 1 in about 20,000 to 34,000 male births. It is also called Christmas disease after Stephen Christmas, the first patient described with having it. It is caused by the lack of clotting factor IX. Lastly, hemophilia C is a mild case that is thought to affect 1 in 100,000 of the adult population. This rare form of hemophilia affects both males and females and is caused by the deficiency of coagulation factor XI. As hemophiliacs do not produce these factors in their blood, it is only able to make a temporary barrier, a scab, to stall the bleeding. Without these factors, the fibrin that stops the bleeding is not able to maintain a clot. This is why hemophiliacs bleed for a long time.
Though in most cases, minor cuts and scrapes are fine, the real damage is caused by internal bleeding. When a hemophiliac has internal bleeding, it can press on vital organs, such as the brain or heart. Internal bleeding can also bring about painful swelling and can lead to joint damage. Treatment can also be harmful as the patient is exposed to possible infection from transfusions. The diagnosis of hemophilia is relatively simple. If the doctor suspects that a child has hemophilia, they will run tests looking for the missing factors. One of the tests they do determines how much von Wildebrand factor is present. If this is low, then they know that it is von Wildebrand disease, not hemophilia. Depending on which factor is missing in the tests, they are able to determine which type of hemophilia they are dealing with. Once this is determined, they classify it as mild, 5 to 30 percent of normal amounts, moderate, 1 to 5 percent of normal, or severe, less than 1 percent of normal amounts of factor. Because hemophilia is a genetic disorder, there is no known prevention methods, though there is a treatment. The treatment for hemophilia involves replacing the missing factors allowing the blood to clot normally. They can do this two ways. One, they can use factors from donated plasma, or two, they can use a genetically engineered cell line called recombinant. And lastly, some random facts. Famous leaders such as Genghis Khan and Abraham Lincoln are known to have suffered from hemophilia. Another famous carrier and the reason for the name royal disease is Queen Victoria, who passed it to many kingdoms via her daughters. Because of this, Tarskevich, son of Tsar Nicholas II, and brother of Anastasia, had this disease which led to the power that Rasputin gained. Rasputin is rumored to have been responsible for the murder of Alex and his family of seven. Affected Population Near the 1970s, the geographic distribution of the hemophilias tended to resemble the distribution of all U.S. males except for a higher concentration in the mid-Atlantic region with 26% of the hemophilia population and 18% of the male population. Treatment There is currently no cure for hemophilia and treatment depends on the severity of the disease. The main form of treatment is called replacement therapy, which involves giving or replacing the clotting factor that is too low or missing. Concentrates of clotting F8 for hemophilia A or clotting F9 for hemophilia B are slowly dripped in or injected into a vein. Let us now discuss another topic, malaria. Malaria has been playing humankind since before the start of recorded history. Annually, there are between 215 and 500 million cases reported and this leads to millions of deaths every year. In Africa alone, malaria kills more than 1 million people annually, including hundreds of thousands of children. Causative Agent and Etiology Malaria is a zoonotic a disease spread from human to human by one of 30 to 50 of the 430 species of the arthropodic vector anopheles. The female mosquito infects a human host by taking a blood meal and in doing so introduce one of four types of the human affecting plasmodium parasite into the body P. vivax, P. ovale, P. falciparum and P. ovale. Of these four types P. falciparum is the most prevalent in endemic region causing 50% of the malarial infections and 90% of deaths. Malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by parasites. It occurs mainly in tropical and subtropical climates. The main symptoms include fever, headaches, chills, vomiting and diarrhea. If not treated in good time, it can have serious and sometimes deadly consequences. In endemic areas, many people naturally build up partial immunity to one or more of the four types of malaria. This can help reduce the impact of a severe outbreak. However, some specific groups are always at risk, including young children. Numerous treatments are available for those infected with the disease. Usually an artemisinin-based drug is combined with another anti-malarial medicine to lower the risk of resistance. Malaria is transmitted by Anopheles mosquitoes, which are most active at night. 
After biting an infected individual, they then spread the parasite to the next person they bite. Infection is therefore strongly linked to mosquito presence and climate conditions. Transmission is more intense during and after rainy seasons. Prevention is key in the fight against malaria. The use of indoor insecticide sprays and treated mosquito nets are two powerful ways of reducing transmission in at-risk zones. Despite a 1950s World Health Organization campaign to eradicate malaria, some 2 billion people were still considered at risk in 2010. Geographic Distribution Malaria is most prevalent in warm regions close to the equator. These areas like Southern Africa, Central America, South America and South Asia are most suited for the subsistence of the Anopheles mosquito. Their climates are tropical and subtropical. There are three types of clinical immunization, two types of acquired immunity and one genetic predisposition for malarial immunity. Clinical immunization is similar to treatment for when a person has already contracted a disease. The first type of clinical immunization reduces the risk of death. The second reduces the severity of symptoms. Antiparasitic immunity, the third type of clinical immunization, reduces the amount of harmful parasites in the infected human. Frequent inoculations are necessary to support clinical immunity to non-fatal symptoms. Acquired immunity affects the parasite directly once they are in humans. The rest prevents sporozoites from reaching full maturity, while the second protects against the stage in the life of a plasmodium in which the parasite is able to be transmitted to another human if an anopheles mosquito should bite. Each type of immunization is specific to one species of plasmodium and immunization must be reapplied relatively frequently to counter the evolving parasites. The only natural immunization for malaria is having the gene for sickle cell anemia. Young children generally cannot obtain decent anti-malarial immunity. Instead, several prevention methods must be utilized. Treatment Current drug treatments for malaria include chloroquine, Sulfadoxine, pyrimethamine, mefloquine, etovacquine, aproquinil, and quinine, doxycycline, and artemisia derivatives. In 2007, chloroquine was recommended by the National Vector Borne Disease Control Program as the first treatment response to combating over 2 million cases of malaria in India, most being of the P. falciparum strain. Despite its effectiveness, chloroquine treatment is being carefully monitored for any resistance shown by the disease to remain in control of any mutations. The second drug of choice is sulfadoxine pyrimethamine, which can be combined with a drug known as arthosonate for a more thorough extermination of the parasitic life and a half recovery time. Malaria and Sickle Cell Disease Sickle cell anemia is commonly associated with malaria because the sickle cell allele in the heterozygous state provides natural immunity against plasmodium infection. The recessive allele is 90% effective in protecting against mortality over the course of a malarial infection. It occurs when a valine is substituted for the glutamate in position 6 of a beta chain of hemoglobin. History Although all types of malaria is known throughout the world today, each strain emerged individuality in a separate location than the others. P. malaria was probably the only strain of malaria to exist in prehistoric times. P. vivax most likely escaped the borders of Africa 10,000 to 30,000 years ago. P. ovale expanded out of Africa into New Guinea around the same time P. falciparum entered Africa approximately 4,000 years ago. Clearly, there is a great range in the times when each strain became apparent. Let us now discuss another topic, polio. The year 1916 saw the first large polio epidemic in New York City with 9,000 infected and 2,343 dead. Although another name for polio is infantile paralysis, 35% of those affected were adults. The first U.S. polio outbreak occurred in Vermont, in 1894, while the last naturally occurring one was in 1979. Causative agent. Polio is a contagious disease spread by a virus family called 
polioviruses, which reside only in humans and spreads primarily through the oral feces route in unsanitary location. Polio. What is polio? Polio is an extremely contagious viral infection that can lead to paralyzation, respiratory problems, or even death. Where did it start? Polio takes its roots to Asia, Europe, and Africa, although it is mostly occurring in developing countries or unsanitary places. Why is this so? Because polio enters through the bloodstream with contaminated feces. It was wiped out in the United States, but after many cases occurring. These outbreaks were recorded in the United States in 1843 being the largest and some throughout the 50s. But a vaccine was created in 1955. The virus is highly infectious. Although it is contagious, 95% of cases don't show symptoms. When they do, it is described as back reflexes and stiffness. It is common in countries such as Afghanistan, India, Nigeria, and Pakistan. Although the virus is practically gone from the West, it is most prominent in places such as the Middle East and India. There are only 831 deaths per year, making it the least of any active virus. Virus Structure Polio's genome is all in one strand of RNA. Although this is common with most viruses, the caspid of the polio virus surrounds, delivers, and protects the RNA. The receptors on the polio virus are made up of proteins. These receptors will invade certain nerve cells to create more viruses. It is not known why they only attack certain nerve cells. Once polio is attached to the host cell, the caspid opens and the genetic material is released. The virus will reproduce in the cell until released. How polio has changed the world. People who were infected with polio were discouraged and felt discriminated. Polio led the way for disability rights. Symptoms. Most cases of polio do not exhibit severe symptoms, allowing those infected to transmit the disease to others without knowing it. The symptoms of this type of polio, non-paralytic polio, abortive polio, myelitics, are similar to other viral diseases and include flu-like symptoms such as sore throat, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of polio often occurs through recognition of early symptoms. The diagnosis is often confirmed through testing a sample of throat secretion, stool or cerebrospinal fluid for the presence of polio virus. Treatment. Although no cure for polio exists, supplementary recovery treatment includes antibiotics for secondary infections, analgesis, breath-resistant devices, exercise and diet. A new type of treatment was developed by Elizabeth Kenny, who immigrated from Australia to the U.S. in 1940 and brought the hot back stretching and muscle massage treatment that are part of normal polio treatment today. The tan respirator or the iron lung was used on patients who had paralyzed muscle groups in the chest and had trouble breathing. Risk factors and prevention. The most widespread preventative measure for polio is the polio vaccine. To prevent polio, polio vaccination must occur first at the age of 2 months, again at 4 months, a third time between 6 and 18 months, with a booster shot between ages 4 and 6. Post-polio syndrome Post-polio syndrome, PPS, occurs in acquired poliomyelitis survivors between 10 and 40 years after the original symptoms. The major effects of PPS is muscle weakness in areas both affected and unaffected by the original infections. Let us now discuss another topic, smallpox. Smallpox is of the genus Orthopox virus, which includes monkeypox, cowpox and other viruses such as ORF and molluscum contagiosa. With a fatality rate of approximately 30%, smallpox is the deadliest of the variola viruses. Immunization Smallpox no longer occurs in nature, not because of a treatment, but because of a system of vaccination. After World War II, the World Health Organization decided to eradicate this disease finally and thus vaccination were administered worldwide. Treatment. Currently, there is no treatment for smallpox, nor is it a high priority to develop a treatment. Before the eradication of smallpox, the only treatment was to vaccinate a person who was in the early stages of infection. Mode of transmission 
Transmission of smallpox requires extended contact with an infected object or individual. Even though smallpox has a history of being used as a biological weapon, the most efficient method of spreading the disease is via blankets or other linens infected with the disease. Morphology Smallpox has two strains, varula major and varula minor. Varula major is a deadlier form of smallpox and is more common. There are four types of varula major, flat, hemorrhagic, ordinary and modified. Etiology. Smallpox has several distinct phases to infection, each with different characteristics and levels of contagiousness. During the incubation period of the disease, 7 to 17 days, a period is not infectious. Then there is the onset of the initial symptoms of a 2 to 4 days. Population most likely affected. Currently, no population is affected by smallpox. The only people who are considered at high risk of contracting smallpox are the scientists that work with the stockpiles of the virus. In the unlikely event of a large-scale smallpox outbreak, it would be the people in less developed countries who would be at risk of contracting and dying from smallpox. Typhoid fever. Typhoid fever is an intestinal disease caused by a typhoid bacillus micro. When infected, bacillia invade the lymphatic tissues of the entire intestinal tract, leading to a mild case of enteritis, inflammation of the small intestine. Symptoms. Possible symptoms of an infected person will include a high fever of approximately 104F and a continual headache. Additional symptoms include frequent and loose bowel discharging, 0.3 cm diameter, rose pots appearing on the abdomen and nervous tremors and delirium becoming apparent. Early history. Given that typhoid is a disease of civilization spread primarily by food, water and human contact, it probably caused little illness in prehistoric man. Yet it has almost definitely been a concern of the early cities established in the Tigris Euphrates Valley. Treatment While the infectious nature of diseases was still little understood, a noteworthy explanation of the spreading of typhoid was suggested by William Butt of Devon in 1856-20 to 20 years before bacterial origins of diseases had been discovered. He purported that typhoid was not spread by stench, but rather spread by contaminated water, milk and the hands of those who attended the sick. Immunization Immunization can be acquired via the oral vaccine, Vivotif, or by a single dose inject able vaccine. Vivotif contains a weakened strand of the typhoid bacilli, which allows the body to easily fight off the bacteria. Approximately one week is required for the vivotix capsule to reach the intestine in which they begin treating the infection. Yellow fever. Yellow fever has likely been around for all of human existence but only began managing human population when travelers who are prone to the disease venture to areas with vector mosquitoes. It is a zoonotic disease which is transmitted by mosquitoes and may be contracted by primates. Causative agent. Yellow fever is a single stranded RNA virus of the family Flaviviridae, which contains over 50 other types of viruses such as dengue fever and West Nile virus. Yellow fever is a transfer between primates by vector mosquitoes. There are two versions of yellow fever, urban and jungle. The urban version is spread by female eight Aegypti mosquitoes which breed well in urban settings because they require a container of shallow water to reproduce. Humans containing urban yellow fever are bitten by those mosquitoes which become vectors after the virus replicates for about 10 days in the slavery glands and then bite another person, therefore transmitting the disease into the new person's bloodstream. The jungle fever which was recognized recently in the 1930s is transmitted by female Haemogogus capricorni, Haemogogus Spagazzini and Haemogogus spagazzini falco mosquitoes. History In the past, disease has played a major role in history. Yellow fever has had its own impact. In particular, those who have witnessed its atrocious symptoms began to become very fearful due to its horrifying symptoms.
prevention and treatment. Blood tests can confirm diagnosis of yellow fever but there is no specific treatment. The basic treatment for yellow fever symptoms includes blood products for severe bleeding, diagnosis for kidney failure and intravenous fluids. The best way to prevent contracting yellow fever is to have a vaccination. Vaccination for the yellow fever is extremely important for travelers going to tropical areas known to have a history with yellow fever. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. In the 1900s, human inhalations and tracks occurred sporadically in the United States among textiles and tanning workers, but the incidence of the illness had declined dramatically. The Black Death is a general term used to describe the plague that spread throughout Europe primarily from 540 to 666 AD. Hyperperfusion, the slowing of blood flow, is caused by dehydration. Two reactions can occur from the entrance of mycobacterium leprae into the body, milder reaction and a stronger reaction. Hemophilia is a rare inherited bleeding disorder in which blood does not clot normally. People who have hemophilia often have longer bleeding after an injury or surgery. Current drug treatments for malaria include chloroquine, sulfadoxine, perimethamine, mefloquine, etovacuin proguanil, and quinine, doxycycline, and artemisia derivatives. Polio patients face hardships and discrimination, and as a result, they were very outspoken about disability rights, believing that disabilities went beyond medical problems. Post polio syndrome PPS occurs in acquired poliomyelitis survivors between 10 and 40 years after the original symptoms. Yellow fever is a single stranded RNA virus of the family. Flaviviridae, which contains over 50 other types of viruses such as dengue fever and West Nile virus. Typhoid fever is an intestinal disease caused by a typhoid bacillus microbe.